Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Plastic Empire Podcast. I'm Bill Singh. Pedro Rodriguez. And I'm Alan Kaplan. And, and we, we are the, the Plastic, Plastic Empire. Empire. <laughs> so, what's up, fellas? How's, how's the week been going, all right? All right, it's been a long week. Uh, <laughs> short week, if you ask me. It's been a what week for you? It's been a short week. A short week? I don't know, man. It feels like NJCC was uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. So NJCC last Sunday, yeah. Right? So uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a little bit of a smaller show than I think it usually is. There were definitely uh, fewer crowds, I think. But uh, you know, the big uh, there was a little controversy. I <laughs> just think. just a tad. I, I find that there was some controversy. Oh, um, let's so hear it. you know, the last podcast we mentioned that there were a number of door prizes, and so I don't know if we really brought this up uh, last show, but the way the door prizes work is that when you walk in, you pay for admission. You get a strip of, I guess, 10 tickets uh, for every $20. And you could choose to buy more tickets if you wish. Um, what sometimes happens at these shows is that people will leave. And they'll end up getting their tickets to their friends. And that way they just don't end up wasting them. Or random people. Or random people. And and what really happened was there was this one dude there. Uh, had his wife and his kid with them. Uh, she was breastfeeding him and just hanging around with him and doing whatever. <laughs> and not that there's anything wrong with that. And basically, wait, don't forget, he dressed the child up as Optimus Prime. That is this, right. That this, is right. It, that was less than six months old. It was adorable. It was adorable. And maybe this is why. So basically, I think that was part of it is that this cute baby was dressed as Optimus Prime. People were leaving the show early and giving this dude their tickets. So toward the end of the show, he may have had like 50 tickets on him. I can't. I just remember him basically sitting there with all the rows streamed displayed out, out yeah. displayed out. <laughs> and I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe he won the last four consecutive he, prizes. He, lo- he, he won four three out of the cons- last five. Three consecutive, and then there was okay. one he didn't win, and the one prior to that he had won. Now, granted, and I will say this to be fair, um... Fran, who was the organizer, he was originally um, giving out ticket numbers and people weren't there. So it's not like consecutively he gave a number and this dude had it. But when he finally did get to a number for which somebody was in attendance with a ticket, it was this guy. So like, right, as you said, four out of five, this guy got the ticket number. Yeah, I, I, you know, okay. it sucks, but... What's in, that? In a- value for each item ridiculous yeah what was it probably like six seven hundred dollars easy easily any any of us winning one of those items would have been a huge victory for the day yeah backflips yeah yeah i mean i won the orange hiss uh before i moved out to california actually that was my last show and i won the orange hiss that was on my birthday too so i was so excited you you lucky bastard uh yeah it was really exciting (laughs) so he you're right it's like just winning one but this dude won so many and i guess you know my problem is is that i don't know how you really police it but i don't like the idea that that is an okay thing that somebody can go up and win more than one thing like that well it, it goes back to you pay to you pay for them tickets basically. Well, you know? normally you would. Yeah, but you know, listen, he 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 played the game right. His, his wife, you know, pulling her titty out all day. You know, guys walking by. You, listen, you got a bunch of us fucking guys. You know, listen, we're all fucking men here. You know. So she was essentially Vector Sigma to the little baby <laughs> Optimus Prime. Absolutely. Um, I think it's a type of thing too that it's just. To- Statistical fluke. It's not going to happen all the time. Right. It's one of the things that when you see it happen and it doesn't happen to you, you're going to hate. Pissed as fuck. Haters. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was shrinking the hater rate that day for I, sure. You definitely were. I mean, I was a little like, what the fuck, man? I gave, you know, obviously I was part of the jeers, but, you, you yeah, know, whatever. I, I mean, part, I was extremely disappointed. I really would have liked to walk away with something. Um, and it just sucks when you don't. But I, I'm not. I'm not going to blame the guy. It's no, not his fault. Not, you're not Mr. Cool when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen. Props to that motherfucker because he stuck around. He was like, I don't give a fuck. He sat on the floor like a fucking two year old. No, he did. He's he like, put that shit together. He's like, baby, <laughs> you keep whipping at that tip for that little kid. Yeah. I'm going to stick around <laughs> and I'm going to wait till the bitter end. Yo, no lie. And he was there till we fucking Ooh. left late, and he yep. was still there. His wife still had her titty out. 
And he was putting that shit together like it was Christmas 85. Yeah, he was putting together the TIE Fighter from uh, Force Awakens. That was the big prize of the day. Six-inch and- scale TIE Fighter. Yeah. So now he that they take it up half of the hallway while, while he's sitting on the floor putting it together as everybody's leaving as the show. Ven- as the- vendors are trying to wheel out their product and shit. <laughs> like, hey, just watch. What, what, was it you, Pedro? He was like, uh, hey, ma'am, you might want to watch your titty. We're coming through. Do you want this shit falling on a baby? No, no, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I do want to say uh, we did mention this uh, at the last show. Marauder John was there. Uh, promoting the new Marauders Valkyrie figures. We saw some of the prototypes. Um, I myself spent $30 on head, or I should say $30 on Marauder heads. <laughs> Lots of head. Lots of heads. And I bought a shirt. They were they were selling shirts for 14 bucks, but if you bought if you made a purchase there, you got it for 10 So that was basically all I bought for the day was just Marauder John stuff. Yeah, same here. I actually got a shirt for free, but uh, maybe because I spent 65 That'll do I it. Green figures. And I've got some of the new uh, goggles that he has with the tinted uh, plastic, like tinted glass. So I got the ones with the red tints. Yeah. They look hot. And Bill, did you buy anything? Uh, I went pretty heavy on G.I. Joe Vintage. Um, you know, like I, I'm trying to build my collection back. So um, I got to shout Pedro. Thank you, man. Because um, we were talking. I was about to buy a um, Payload version 2. Um for about $55 and I had mentioned it to Pedro while we were sitting around hanging and he's like yo I, I seen uh, there was a guy in the corner a transformer guy he had a whole bag of astronauts he said you know he was in there man he had the umbilical cord and everything so I'm like oh word alright so I'll go out I checked it out and uh, shit you not sure enough had a uh, countdown a countdown body with a Hawk 80, uh, 91 head and accessories um, yeah I really like that one yeah like a little custom and then there, there it was, fucking com- super mint, per- almost perfect. Uh, Payload version two had the umbil- had the umbilical cord, any uncut file card, and I paid fucking twenty dollars, man. I mean, yeah, because he had some great sales. If I had more money, I would have picked up some other stuff. I saw that he was actually from him. I bought. I finally completed my Masters of the Universe classes collection up to today. Because I'm not going to be able to keep up with it this month. Oh, that's but right. Was, what would you get? The robots? Ho- the, ho- the hover bots. Oh, that's and right. I, the hover bots. What it would have cost to got more, to get one figure with shipping and tax from Maddie Collector Online for 40 bucks, Actually, like $2 less. So I, I was happy. Instead of spending $55 or more on eBay. Yeah. What else you get? You got the Marauders and that. What else you pick up? Um, I picked up this, um, this small Macross uh, figure. Um, it was 15 bucks, and I love the way it looked, and it supposedly transformed. Complete crap. This re- thing is floppy as hell. Really? That's why it was 15 Yeah, I remember, you, I remember you had it out. You were saying it was pretty flimsy. Yeah, it, it, so I was able to get him in a stance, but he's very flimsy, uh, and he's a parts former. It's not like the original Jeff – it's not the G1 Jeff Fire that's based – on the Macross, um, you know, Valkyrie, whatever, Valkyrie F1 or whatever it is, um, this this one you needed parts to transform it from from robot to Gerwalk mode to plane. So it, I, I saw that and I was like, forget it, it's too complicated. I'm leaving him in robot form and putting the parts away. So, but for fifteen dollars, it's a nice statue. So speaking of continuing your vintage collection, yeah, we will have another opportunity tomorrow. Yes. Because we are going to go toy show hopping again. Yep. So, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go. So, which is very unfortunate, yeah, and we sucks. are going to ride you for it, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker! So, the show tomorrow is in Parsippany, and it's called ToyCon NJ4. Yeah, it is the fourth what? installment. Parsippany. What's that? Like a Parsippany. It sounds like something that should be on a spice rack. It's <laughs> it's an upscale town, Pedro. Yes, exactly. Oh, so an upscale show too. Yes, yes. Lots of uh, upscaleness. So I've never been to this show before. Um, I've been to um, a show at this place. I don't know if it was ToyCon. Is it the same building? That's PAL building. Um, I I gotta guess it's the same show. I, I probably was at the first one. 
if anything, since this is the fourth one, I'm guessing if it's once a year, um, I don't know if it was two days. This one's two days. We're going to be going Saturday. Um, but there's a lot there's a lot going on at this show. Uh, different days for different things. Some of the wrestlers, right? Yeah, there's going to be some wrestlers who are going to be showing up for two signings uh, both tomorrow and on Sunday. Um, Toy Hunter is going to be there along with his flunkies. And uh, there's going to be basically, I mean, I'm just looking at terms of what they're, they're advertising everything from comic books to toys to die cast to cap guns to board games to monsters. It's basically everything you can imagine is apparently going to be here. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to it because, again, I've never really been to I've never been to this show. I've never been to a show that, that at least on paper has so many different uh, avenues to choose from so i'm looking forward to it i'm afraid of what i'm gonna be spending there actually i I like the price point i mean five dollars admission yeah the admission is five dollars so that's that is fantastic um can't beat that you really can't beat that there's an early admission of 15 (laughs) and even that you're spending less than you spent just to get into njcc so uh yeah we're doing that tomorrow um there's some door prizes right are there door prizes for that show yeah i i they do it every half hour oh um Real quick, after 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 this, we'll talk about it. But um, yeah, they're doing door prizes every half hour. I don't know what it is though. And um, Rob Bruce will be there as well from uh, Comic Book Man. Um, oh, okay. A lot of guys probably obviously know him in the area. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yep. we hear you. Can you? Uh, you can hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, I think I lost you guys there for a moment. Oh, okay. uh, good luck getting a good a good deal on uh from uh, Toy Hunter. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Toy Hunter always has some very, very impressive stuff, but he asks for an arm, a leg, and a testicle, uh, basically for everything that he sells there. So, yeah. well, when you when you're uh, offering five hundred dollars for a five hundred dollar item, expect to pay seven hundred. Exactly. What else have we got? So, I got your Mets jersey for you today. Pick yes. So, uh, I um, not a toy item, but it is a collecting item. So, I figured we can bring it up here. Um, I had gone with Bill to this hobby shop uh, last week, and uh, I've never owned an original Cooperstown Collection jersey of anything, never anything official. And I happened to see this used uh, 1986 Cooperstown Collection Keith Hernandez jersey. Uh, it has the 1986 patch, the 1962 to 1986 uh, anniversary patch, and uh, fully decked out, had a few small minor stains, but... Got it for $50. Yeah. Mitchell and Ness, too. So. Yeah. 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 So that's really hard to say no to. Um, I didn't pick it up last week because I wasn't sure I'd be spending at the New Jersey Comic Con, and I didn't spend up spending that much. So I figured, let me get it, and I got it, and I Collector can't wait to wear Con. it. Collector Con. Collector yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's real nice. What's that, Pedro? When you say used, who had it before? I don't know. They, 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 we, they, they mentioned that they get collection slob it has a lot of fucking stains on it exactly so someone did whatever on it i mean it's not that many no, stains. It's, it's not that many it's really not noticeable if it was noticeable i wouldn't have bought it, it really um, is. <laughs> but but basically um they mentioned that they do buy collections and i think the entire store is bought collections they have used boxes of cards uh, they have cards themselves. They have the jerseys and other things. So these basically are all items that did belong to other people. They are all secondhand. But, you know, when you go on, I was looking on eBay just for the for the hell of it to see what these jerseys go for. And a good number of them were in the triple digits. So to see one for $50 with very minimal staining and just overall looking really nice, um, I thought it was worth it. Now, where these these with that jersey it's a cooperstown edition is if when he was inducted into the hall of fame oh, no. wait a minute, he, he's not a hall of famer so when did they make this jersey the cooperstown collection basically is that that's the label for it to basically it's, it's almost like uh like just a, a vintage just a vintage collection basically yeah it's almost mitchell like, and ness does the the vintage uh old school look you know they bring right. like this one's 86 right right so it wasn't necessarily it wasn't like it wasn't a, a jersey that keith hernandez himself wore necessarily but it was an official jersey that was made with the official materials what the players wear it's different from the replica jerseys and when was this shirt made recent was this one recent yeah i mean not not that recent i don't know exactly what year it was made but within the last five <laughs> I'd say five to ten years at mm. least. Yeah. You know. Oh wow. Well it's yeah, Mitchell and Ness. Yes. Mitchell and Ness does all that stuff. You know, they do the old school shirts and the throwbacks and whatnot. And how is that different from the replicas that you get at Models? 
the replicas and models are done by more generic companies that work directly through MLB. Um, but they are not, um, I'm trying to think of the way to say it. They're not like Cooperstown certified. The Cooperstown Collection certified stuff is the actual stuff that's made from the materials that the players are wear. So a good example, Pedro, for instance, is I have a replica Alfonso Soriano New York Yankee jersey. It is a home jersey. However, the back of that jersey has Soriano's name. The original Soriano home jersey would not have his name because the Yankees do not wear their names in the back of their jerseys. So that's a good example of a same, replica jersey. Re, is it the same material? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, as it's, the, just, it's just or like as a, a replica won't be the same material. Correct. Right. Yeah, you know, some replicas okay. replicas have the uh, that slick uh, iron-on feel to it versus the actual lifted, you know, um, textured felt and whatnot. Right. So basically, Pedro, if you feel the Mets logo and the number 17 on the front and Hernandez's name and the number 17 on the back, it is very, very thick material. Yeah. It's raised. It's, it's not... raised. It's embossed. Yeah. And the same goes for the patch. It's on the sleeve. Okay. It's beautiful. I'll show it to you when I see you. It is really just beautiful. Yeah, it's wonderful for the second best first baseman in New York ever. <laughs> yes, I was saying I need a Don Magley one now so I can like frame them together and say New York first baseman of the 1980s. <laughs> Donnie Baseball, yeah. baby. So yeah, that was uh that was a nice little purchase that I made uh that I'm, you know, now ironically it's like now I don't know what I'm going to be spending tomorrow, so it was good that I spent the $50, but I think I, it was good. I'm glad that I did it. Yeah. You were pining over that fucking thing. I but was. The place uh, usually is open uh, Thursday. I, I They weren't open Wednesday. I wasn't able to get there Monday and Tuesday because my, my girl had the car. And then, um, so I go over there. They're closed Wednesday. I went over there Thursday, and there's a sign. We, we will be open tomorrow at 12. You know, I, I'm, I'm sitting here going, oh, shit. But uh, I took a picture of the sign just to show them, and uh, you could see the jersey in the background. So it was still there. I figured it wasn't going anywhere. It's a very... The store is very slow, you know. A lot of stuff sits, but um, I was able to grab it today. This way, he could have it when he goes home and cuddle with it. Oh yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. So, uh, <laughs> so Pedro, tell me about this uh, Fort Max. Oh, very exciting news! Um, Hasbro has really been stepping up their game um, within the last year or so, and it probably has to do with the fact that they brought in John Warden, who was the designer was one of the designers on G.I. Joe on uh, the uh, on the ROC stuff, the Rise of Cobra, POC, 30th anniversary. And I think that was about it. And after that, everything was just reused of, uh, of those lines. He is really knocking out of the park the Transformers are coming out. They're basing them on the IDW Comics run of Combined Wars. And I guess after Combined Wars, they move into Titan Wars? Is that correct? I think it, the original name was Titan Wars, and I think now the new name is Titan Return. Titan's Return. Um, I think that the uh, the picture they revealed today of Fort Max was, I mean, it's an old picture. It's something they have not made public yet, but it still has the old Titan Wars branding. But I think they right. have changed it to Titan's Return. So basically on the, Jap- on the Japanese Weibo, on the Japanese website Weibo, um, somebody produced a picture of what looks like a a um, a behind the scenes mock up of what met, of what Fort Maximus is going to look like. It's probably going to be a heavily retooled um, generations Metroplex, and it's going to have Cerebro and Spike, and it just it's just a hand drawing um, that's been colored. Um, but it so it's not an act. It's not a it's not a three D computer rendering of it. It's not a it's not a really good render of it. But it looks super promising. Okay, and the and the details with it inc- uh, claim that it's going to come with an exclusive sword. Um, I think exclusive um, paint apps. Like it's going to have G one paint apps or something like that. I have and that it would read what for one seventy nine which probably means that they're discussing the San Diego Comic-Con yeah. uh, version of it. That's exactly what but I was about to say, a, yeah. It has a February 19th date on it, and I doubt they're going to drop it at date. That to me sounds like, and what a lot of people online think, that might be the, the Toy Fair date. That's that You know what's so funny? It's going I, that, that's yeah. exactly what he told me. We were discussing it earlier. And I didn't even read anything online. I just thought to myself, yeah, that sounds like Toy Fair. 
So I have a feeling that I think you're right, Pedro, and I think everybody, I guess whoever was discussing this is correct, that that was probably, it's, it's, a, it's a slide that they are officially planning to show at Toy Fair. Yeah, I, that's, um, wow, if, um, I would hope they would have an actual, I would hope they would actually have a prepared for, but for Toy Fair, but it could be a slide. Um, yeah, that's what I thought, but I, even though, but we're not the only ones. Everybody thought about it. Just like I thought I was the first person to come up with the uh, theory, the, the fan theory <laughs> that, uh, Luke Skywalker was Kylo Ren. And then I realized that every <laughs> jerk up there came up with the same theory. Just to prove, just to prove, boys and girls, there is no original thought out there. No, unless you're Einstein. That would be interesting it. if it was him, though. How the story I, I'm, play I'm, out. Just, I'm liking this Titans Returns line better than the than the Combiner Wars because the Combiner Wars had a lot of swing and misses. They started out strong with Superion, and it got a little bit questionable after that. But what they're doing with Galvatron, what they're doing with Blaster making him a, a headmaster and a, and he opens up into a base. And I know for G1 purists, it, it sounds awful. <laughs> it looks like fun. And it looks like fun a 40-year-old and an 8-year-old can have. And that's what I, that's what I'm really excited about what they're doing, which kind of sucks because with, between the third party and Hasbro and everything else I get, it's just getting really, really expensive. So, you know, speaking of third party, another interesting story that kind of came out this week. Um, BotCon revealed their brochure. Um, so BotCon is the Fun Publications official Hasbro Transformers convention, just like they do a G.I. Joe show. There's also a Transformers show every year. And the brochure was your basic generic brochure. It basically is stating that, you know, the figure ex- the, the figure convention said is it's actually going to be a number of figures that are going to be forming a combiner robot, just like Combiner Wars. But... Um, the the piece of information that is everybody's knickers in a twist is something that's both new and old. The, the thing that's pretty old about it is that they've been saying for the past few years, um, you are not allowed to sell third party transformers oh, at the show. Jesus. And you know, this is something honestly that I've gone to two botcons in the last three years, and at both botcons I went to, this was not being enforced. I mean, dealers all over the place were selling third party, and I didn't see anybody policing it. I didn't see any issues with it. The thing that's new, though, that's causing a lot of folks to have an uproar now is that there's an additional little tidbit where they're saying you can't even sell these out of your hotel room. Bullshit. And I do believe that's bullshit because the thing of it is is that let's say, for instance, although this is obviously not going to be a very strong possibility, let's say you just happen to be staying at this hotel. You're not going to the show and you have third party transformers on you. And you realize, oh, hey, there's some fans who are Transformers. Hey, maybe they want to buy some of these things. <laughs> is Brian Savage or somebody really going to go and throw you out of the hotel because you're selling third-party Transformers? It's it's not only unenforceable, but I'm kind of thinking it's it's almost illegal to get involved in that regard that you're saying you cannot do this out of your own hotel room. Yeah, that makes no sense. It's not Brian Savage. He's not going to do it. He's the mouthpiece for Hasbro. Right. Hasbro will do it like they did to Aliosha many times. If they find that he has something that he that is their intellectual property and it has not been sold in stores, they will confiscate it because they'll just lawyer up. I understand. I understand that on the sales floor, but when you're talking about in your own hotel room, yeah, that's the thing. I don't. I don't. I, that can't fly with me. I, it doesn't fly with me either. But I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Yeah. What they're what they're probably saying is that you're, you're running illegal sales. So bottom line is everybody's just got to do it on the down low. Yeah, Don't basically. show faces. Because um, the thing is that it's not just the sales. Last but con, they used the hotel rooms to showcase new third-party figures that would go up for sale in the future. <laughs> is that where this so, is coming from? That's part of it. It's oh, see, a I big part of it. You had these stores, and then you had some. I, and I wouldn't be surprised if some of the online stores that normally sell third party figures but weren't on the floor were probably selling some in their rooms. Mm. Yeah, I makes definitely sense. saw reviews, and I saw and introductions to future third party toys taken on hotel bureaus with the TV behind them. See, what I found really funny though is that. So two bot cons ago that I attended, and we're not just talking about any you know third party sellers here. We're talking about let's say Big Bad Toy Store. 
Big Bad Toy Store was selling their exclusive. Um, remind me, Pedro, what was the name? It was the Fort Max toy that was recolored as Brave Max. It was. Uh... Remember, but it, it was made by Toy. It was made by Toy World. Toy Thank World you. made um, yep. Brave, Brave Maximus and uh, Fort Maximus in a um, classic scale. That's or right. Or I should say, maybe not classics, but they were like eight, nine inches tall. So Big Bad Toy Store, who is a huge retailer of official Hasbro product, was openly advertising, you can get this for the first time here at our booth at BotCon. I mean, that's not down low. That is, you are out there making this proclamation, and nobody brought the hammer down on them for that. So I don't understand how exactly this rule is being enforced if a retailer like Big Bad Toy Store can go and make a proclamation like that and not have anything happen. It's like anything. The big boys get away with whatever they want. Say that again, Pedro? Haven't done that. In, they haven't done that in the last couple of years. I think they're really coming down. And also, this proclamation that you can't have it even in your rooms, isn't that new? That part is new. Yeah, but, so but, I, but the I whole... think it's just they're really trying to come down on this. Because I... what I love about it, what I love about all of this is that up to now, and I don't know if TPP, and I don't want to get into a political discussion about it. I don't know if TPP is going to affect this. But what I love is that these third-party Asian companies are getting away with creating the Transformers that I always wanted and the ones that I didn't know I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's true. They're making some amazing shit. And I'm not, uh, you know, you guys know I'm not a Transformer guy. I love them, but I don't buy them. I don't follow them that much. And the, the, the pictures you, you guys are showing me, I'm just blown away, you know. It's it, it's because of the technology and the engineering and the software is there that allows this stuff to happen. And these guys out in China have access. I don't know how it's done. It's got to be – it's clandestine at, at, at some level. They might use some of the same factories as Hasbro, maybe completely different factories. I don't know. But, for, but you know, more than half of these, I would say a good 60%, are – as good or better quality, actually, no, I'm sorry. They're better quality than what Hasbro has been producing. And Hasbro's stepping up their game. I think, I but think, it's, yeah. I, I think like um, Hasbro at this point, they're probably putting their foot down, seeing as they back Brian Savage and Fun Pub. You know, I, I figure at this point, they, they're seeing that market being taken over and they're saying, hey, we got to stop it. Um, and, you know, you hit on something there. You hit on something major there. Um, I've seen a few interviews with Peter St. Clair in the last, since the last BotCon to now. And actually, he's going to be on Cybercast, um, on the Cybercast webcast on YouTube tomorrow. And I imagine they're going to touch on this. Um, one of the things that Peter St. Clair, who runs the BotCon for FunPub, Hasbro is forcing um, FunPub to work closely with them on the Transformers brand. That, I think, is the reason why we're seeing that the new um, sus- uh, figure subscription service and the new and, – and, I'll, and, and I'll, I think two or three of the five box set figures for the next BotCon are Combine of War repaints. And the first time I got those Combine of War figures was awesome. This is the, this is the, these are like the fifth, sixth, and seventh iterations of the same mold but with different colors and then giving them a different name. It's G.I. Joe and, all over again? No, it's G, we're lucky with G.I. Joe. Hasbro doesn't is it being protective of G.I. Joe and letting them do what they want. I was going to say, yeah, Hasbro we, allows the club yeah. a lot more leeway with G.I. Joe. We get a lot more um, unique items that, yes, they're used from existing molds, but they don't feel like they're redone. I guess you're right with the with the with the club stuff. I should I should I should have said with uh, Hasbro themselves. God forbid they do anything new. So uh, it's I think this Hasbro um, basically putting the placing the, putting their thumb on the on the Botcon uh, club is uh, is not good. Um, I think it's it's affecting the, the 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 quality of the and the uniqueness of what they can offer. It's yeah. already tough recreating transformers from the same molds because they don't the club doesn't create new transformations they take figures that already exist 
Right. But in the past, they they would get very creative in cre- coming up with new things that even somebody like me that's not into the Bacan stuff, I was like, I got to get that figure, I got to get that one, and I got to overpay for that one. But now they're just redoing Combiner Wars, and they're just redoing them. And for a hundred dollars a piece or whatever it is, not worth it. And for you know, this is probably something that they're going to do next year too. Maybe next year they will have to come out with something that ties into Titans Return. Um, it would be interesting to see how they would do that. I wonder if the box set would just be one big Titan figure. Nah, they, I don't think so, but that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Something like that might be a very cool thing. Like for, maybe they'll make a Brave Max, or maybe they'll make something else that there will be a completely new character that would use an existing mold. But But to your point... Um, it does sound like they want to have a more coherent continuity between what the branding is at the time for Transformers and the show itself, which is something that G.I. Joe is not constrained by because G.I. Uh, Joe. You hit, the, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly it. It's uh, That's exactly what Hasbro is doing. Now, it would be cool if they did Grand, I think it's Grand Maximus. A repaint of Ford Maximus as Grand Maximus as a con convention exclusive would be killer. That would it would be killer. People would be full, tripping all over themselves. And for those of you that don't know, Grand Maximus is the is a Japanese variation of Ford Maximus that not only included the robot, the exclusive sword, but it also create it also came with a pretender shell for Cerebros. Mm-hmm. If they were to do that, it would be insane, but uh, we can only hope. Now, there is a good piece of news that may be potentially coming out from the G.I. Joe side of um, of uh, Fun Pub, the Joe Club. There might be a figure subscription, I'm sorry, a vehicle subscription from the club. That would be dope. I would be, they're talking about actually redoing some um, older molds that have been destroyed. So hopefully we don't get set four or six snow cats in different colors. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, I'm all for, I'm all for a vehicle subscription. I'll be in cause you guys know I don't do the modern stuff. So I'm not in on, on the uh, subscription service for the figures, but I mean, like you said, as, as long as we don't get another uh, sky, ha- you know, sky Hawk, sky, whatever they want to call them now. And and snow cats and such and enough is and enough. Since night landings, okay. as long as it's not those, and they can get creative. You know, use those as a base. Maybe I don't know. Maybe not. No, I don't want any a, more snow cats. How about a hurricane? I mean, they ruined the rattler mold. I mean, they could have done the amount of rattler stuff they put out has been pretty bad overall. I think the first the A ten was was the best, mm-hmm. and then they went and destroyed the mold with all that rocket firing sound bullshit and you know. the sound attack crap yeah i mean you know how about a, a, a hurricane that would be that would be awesome bringing back a nice hurricane or condor to- but the thing is if, if they do this though they're going to have to slightly alter the vehicles because they're going to want them to be able to fit Fucking modern it, figures yeah. and that's something that a number of fans are talking about on the board is that the only way they'd really be in for something like this is if it works in continuity with the larger figures now. So whatever Hasbro does, even if they pull out retired molds, they are going to have to tweak them a bit because if they just can only fit vintage figures, I don't know. That's not going to work so well for a lot of modern collectors. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think of that. Must That's a must. They they would lose money. Yep. The money is enough modern collectors. And and you can still fit the regular jo- the uh, the vintage Joes in it, which is great. Yep. Yeah. But it that would be foolhardy for them to come out with a uh, with a, with vehicles that only fit vintage figures. Yep. Which I wouldn't put it past them, and then they try <laughs> to sell it. They all you got to do is cram the figure. Hey, some of the, some of those vintage figures won't even fit in the vintage molds, right? You know. So, but the question is really, what are these going to cost? Because they are their figures alone are very expensive. So I can't imagine what a vehicle is going to cost. And you got to figure the figures are, um, they're what? 35. What are they a piece? 30, 34, 35, About 35 a piece. Yeah. So they're, they're set. Every figure is 35, 35. You have say a hurricane and then a mauler and then a mamba. I mean, how are you going to adjust for that? You know, you're going to have to adjust for that. How much was the snow cat havoc? 
No. Now they didn't have to do much tooling. I'll I'll agree to that. that but was that wasn't that expensive. That was about forty bucks. Let's say they make these. Well, they, you know what? They're gonna make these anywhere from from seventy to a hundred dollars. Don't forget how much it's, the uh, tiger tiger tomahawk. What what did what did they call it? I don't know what they called it. The tomahawk, the tiger force from last year. That was a hundred dollars. Only a hundred? I thought it was like a hundred and sixty. Or is that secondary market? Oh, you know I don't. I thought it was a hundred. Do you know Pedro? I, I, you know what? I remember a hundred. I'm not sure, yeah. but I'm gonna tell you where there is a difference. With the, it might, it could be, and I don't know this for a fact. It could be cheaper in a figure subscription because you're locking an X number of units. With the, with the exclusives at the con, they might be trying to cover the ones that they don't sell. I don't know. Am I grasping the straws here? Right. No, I mean it makes sense. So I, makes sense. And they're not all going to be the size of the Tiger Hawk. You know they're going to do some smaller ones. Let's just hope it's not like a jetpack, yeah. a Cobra jetpack. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't mind it. Well, it's a new mold. They didn't have that stupid peg in the jetpack. But, yeah. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't want to. Yeah. They might do another claw. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe they'll do a snake. Well, well, you know what? They could make a big uh, – you know what? If they made a claw that was twice the size – of the original with twice the amount of detail and moving parts, I'd be okay with it. Yeah, but they took they completely took the bottom off of the thing that they've been releasing lately, right? Yeah, and just they did. it's basically the top with a couple. They whatever, cannibalized it. You know, that thing is basically a uh, a Korean store knockoff. <laughs> Pretty much. And then you got what else? Um, how about a like a a snake armor? Right. You know, I'd be that'd be pretty cool. Right, like a new snake armor yeah. that could fit a modern figure yeah. would be very good. God, they would sell like hotcakes. Oh, without a doubt. They had cooling. Actually, no. Didn't they release a snake in the oh. ROC line that actually fit those figures? You're right. They, they oh, did. the black one. The black one. That's true. Yep. But that's uh, interesting. I thought that yeah. was the original mold, though. It was. Did it just fit original the modern figure? It, it might have. I mean, you know, that plastic is so watery, you can just fucking stuff it in there like Play-Doh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> And the figures, the figures are pretty thin. Yeah, I mean, you won't be able to a gung ho or a, a 50th gung ho or a 50th leatherneck or a 50th uh, um, Destro for that matter, but you can fit a lot of others. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope it's not that. I, I love me a snake, but I would like an updated version of it. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed that this vehicle subscription is not just wind. You know, hopefully, it's a real deal. And that it's worth it because I will get it even if it's crap. And uh, I, I'd rather that it be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, if it's worth it, the mo- I'll put the money out. I mean, that's the thing. I, I may not collect the, the modern figures, but, you know, vehicles are a different level, a different thing. You know, they could still go with the vintage, you know. And it's always fun to have a new mold that hasn't been out there. I mean, what was the mold? It was supposed to be in the Tanks for the Memories. What was that, 2007? I'd love to see a nice Cobra Mauler, man. You know, that'd be... A blue... And they're going to give us a blue one. That'd and be fucking awesome. Where's going to be green or tan? I hope not. No, in uh, in, in Tanks for the Memory, the Mauler that was supposed... To, there were two Maulers, a Joe one and a Cobra one. It was green and blue. I, oh, okay. I didn't know that. I thought it was only going to be the Cobra one. No, it was one for Joe, which was going to be green, and then one for Cobra. I could, get, I, I could get down with a green one, too, you yeah. know? Different yeah. from the tan. I'd go further green. It'd be different because of different Hell color. Yeah. I would have rather have that than money back, but it was nice getting the money back. Yeah. <laughs> Money's always good. Yeah, but... The club is feisty when it comes to the money, money situation. Yeah. I mean, to have us put the money up front and then it not work out was a little, was a little much. But I love what the club does, and I love that they continue to do it. And – I know a lot of people can't afford it, and it's not something that's for everyone. But if I, I personally feel, and I, know, I think so, and a few of us do, that if we have to support it, you know, it's not always going to be great. But we get a lot of fun and a lot of pleasure out of this stuff. Yeah. Well, me too. <laughs> um. What, so what do you want? What do you want to say on the uh, third party stuff? Uh, did we touch base on all that, or you want you got some other things you wanted to mention? Oh, um, it's uh, th- third party is uh, Ask Alan is a slippery slope. <laughs> um, they came out with a comic book act with an IDW comic book accurate impactor who was the original leader of the wreckers. 
and who appeared, uh, who, who made an appearance, um, spoiler alert, on uh, Last Stand of the Wreckers. This impact their fit toy by Mastermind Creations is insane. Um, if you're if, if you're really interested in third party, um, there's the big what I would call the big four. Anything from these companies is usually a solid home run. They might have had a, a few bumps when they first started producing figures, but they've really got it. Uh, they really they really um, gotten it down and producing great Transformers, uh, Mastermind Creations. Make or Make toys. I like Make because it makes it sounds foreign. I think it's Make. Sounds special. I know, but a lot of people say Make toys, so I don't know. Yeah, I always thought but, it was Make toys as well, but yeah, I don't know it's, shit. It's, it's, I mean, these Americans. <laughs> um, fans toys that does these fantastic mastermind. What? I mean, uh, masterpiece um, third party pieces and fan toys that does a great job of putting of of taking the original concepts and making it their own. So if you're just strictly G1, it's not for you, but the engineering and design is amazing. There are a lot of other companies out there. Um, X Transbots is doing a great job. Um, that Apollyon, um, you guys brought it up last week. It's just, the, it, 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 as of right now, it's the best masterpiece Megatron. Yeah, it's just the gorgeous good. piece. Um, and these things really, they add a great value to a older Transformers collector. I'll tell you. I have my. Go ahead. No, I would say I have my vintage, but as a collector, these things are literally piece for me. They're literally pieces of art. Yeah, I, I gotta say, man, the, the stuff you're posting, it's it's so tempting to me. I don't collect it, but I, you know, I, like I said, I love this stuff. Like me, uh, I'm all about the sculpt, the look, the feel. You know, unfortunately, I can. I just basically stick with GI Joe. It's what I could, what I could afford. You know, if I start branching off, it'll kill me. But some of this stuff is so tempting. The problem is most of this stuff is what? $75 or more, more than 75. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so some of the stuff, they've got these little three inch figures that are 40, 35, 40, $50. Yeah. Those, yeah, are, the, those you, are the ones I don't want. <laughs> if you want a scale transformer though, that scales with the legends right. class and the Voyager class and what have you, those are all triple run. digits. Right. So it's like I, I – it's just the like – The legend is $50, and they have incredible amount of detail and articulation. Trust me. They are crazy in what they're doing. Oh, I, I love it. I, you know, the um, – was it the shockwave? I mean, and you got, the shockwave that's coming out? The shockwave. Well, the one – actually, the shockwave that's coming out now is the Masterpiece official shockwave. No, what's the other one that looks better? The, the quake third wave? part is that what that's it was? quake wave yeah you guys have po put it up a few weeks ago in the chat you know boys and and, and it's the fucking chat man i was telling alan you know we were talking it's like second gill put me in the chat with everybody it's like i'm back i'm, I'm like a switch man i'm on and it's just like <laughs> there i am like 15 grand in the hole or whatever and it's like now it's like with these transformers these third parties and stuff i'm sitting here going uh, Itch, I'm, I'm itching, man. I'm like a, that fucking plastic addict. You know, I got to have my fix. Yeah. And it's like... Vintage. Ah. So, I grew up as a hardcore He-Man, G.I. Joe, and Transformers fan. G.I. Joe, I thought overall, was the best line. Transformers had a lot to do with the cartoon yeah. and the media. All right, and the toys were cool. Don't get me wrong. For late seventies, early eighties, expensive, in amazing engineering, but they were ex bingo yeah. expensive. That's why in we Christmas, didn't, I didn't have I, them either. You know, I, I didn't have just, that many of them. I had yeah. a few, but yeah, it was GI yeah, Joe, Man, and Transformers. Same thing. Yeah. Did we lose? I remember uh, walking into an Alexander's in the eighties, and they had uh, Megatron. Alexander's. And I, I want to get Megatron. Megatron was twenty four ninety five. So you compare a twenty four ninety five toy, which today is Bupkis, two ninety five, but to a two ninety five GI Joe figure, or a seven ninety five wrestling superstar yeah. figure, or twelve dollar vehicle. You yep, know? yep. But that, that there you go. I mean, Transformers were very very pricey. Yeah. I need a trans. I need a time machine. My God, twenty five dollars mint in box. Yeah. Hey, that's like um, the, these dreams I fucking get, man. I'll be I'll be sleeping, I'm dreaming, and uh, all of a sudden I walk into some random ass store, 
and there's like a, the gold mine. Every GI Joe ever made, and uh, you know my whole my whole thing is like, how do I get every single one of these? You know, of course you wake up, you got nothing, and, and you're in that suck. And and in my dreams, I never finish what's going on, so I never end up getting all the figures. It's always like. Have debacle. the fun of taking it home and opening them up, yeah, and I, then <laughs> it's always the debacle where I my dream always is just a constant like circle of screw ups and how I don't get them and you know I never get to enjoy those fucking dreams except for seeing them. Well, there are a lot of collectors now who've been posting recently on Facebook. They've been posting pictures of toy stores from back in the day. I love that. I I got all them pictures. I save all them pictures yep. and. Yep. You know. So it's like you know you see what 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 aisles used to look like in yep. Toys R Us and Child World and everywhere else. And it's I remember shame, myself. Man. Now it's it's a joke. It's it is it's a joke. I mean they look like the convenience yeah. stores now. Yeah. I remember in '84, I wanted to. I, I, I all I wanted were He-Man figures, and my mom was trying to convince me to get Star Wars figures because they were cheaper, <laughs> and they were the power of the Force in a bin in this huge bin, and they were selling them for peanuts. And the He-Man figure was at least twice as much, but I wanted He-Man and I wanted Fake Or and I wanted uh, um, I, w- I wanted Skeletor. My God, if I had picked up those figures, but you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I would have opened them up and ruined them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'd be all yellowed and dirty and shit, and long gone probably, buried. Exactly. Backyards past. <laughs> so. Yeah, so um, I, when it comes to third party, they're doing great stuff. Every once in a while, um, I'll pick, uh, I'll let you guys know on something that I see that's coming out or that is out that just looks spectacular. Well, there is a piece that's going to be out very, very soon. Um, Pedro, you'll need to remind me what the company is. I think it's DX9. They're coming out with Tyrant. It's either DX9 or X Transbots, but I think DX9 is correct. It is yes, DX9. Com- that, yeah, X Transbots are doing Cyclonus and Scourge. Uh, DX9 is doing a Galvatron, which they're calling Tyrant. And it's the same company that just did a, a, um, a Rodimus Prime third-party piece called Carry. Is that the one you were telling me? Maybe that's the... Uh... Maybe that's what you were thinking of. Yeah. So Galvatron. Ty- yep. Was Wait. Yeah, not Shockwave. It was Galvatron. Yep. I'm sorry. So this looks exact. And Pedro, I don't know if you saw recent in-package fi- in pictures. It's, it's really... It's perfect. And it comes with two different colored uh, cannons. It comes with the... Yellow arm cannon and the orange arm cannon. That is the one. I saw them. And what I love about, and you're right, it is DX9. What I love about DX9, their boxes are very unique. They did an awesome, they did an awesome astro masterpiece uh, scale Astro Train. They also did a uh, a Rekgar. Um, on their boxes, and they also actually they also did a masterpiece Mirage. Their boxes has this really cool late '60s art. It looks like an art to the uh, to a Grateful Dead concert. It does actually. That's a good point. It's just beautifully drawn with all that crazy font that they used to have that would arch around the top of the uh, the art of the figure, going all around. Uh, you know, you don't want to be an asset looking at this thing. <laughs> Well, maybe yeah. I would. Just and that box, just a box. I mean, I, I'm a sucker for a good packaging. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely myself as well. I'm big into the, uh, the boxes and the card art on GI Joe. You know, since I've, you know, for the last couple incarnations of my collection, <laughs> it's you know, it's the art. The art really, I, I don't know, man. It just, I guess it, it, it's, it's what made it. Part of it. Say that again. It's part of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you love big time, and that's like the um the the books we're getting the yeah. uh, the Kickstarter the uh, art of GI Joe. Um, you know, like I went all in with all the posters. I have a couple already, but I was like, you know what, just go in, get them all, and um, you know, I mean that's. Just hey, to be whenever able to look we at that. whenever we get that huge man cave. You know, mansion that we're going to share. That we're going to put them all up. You know, framed in glass. Yep, the compound. <laughs> we can dream, can't we? <laughs> Keep playing the lottery, fellas. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I guess uh, unless there's anything else, we'll wrap this up. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, what we'll do is uh, next time we're on, we'll uh, we'll make sure to give a review of the the toy uh, NJ. 
Toy Con, New Jersey. Toy Con, New Jersey. Thank you. <laughs> Toy Con, New Jersey 4. And we can go through, you know, what we ended up picking up. And, uh, yeah. I mean, the other thing that's happening actually this weekend is Pedro and I are going to be attending um, uh, like a, a superhero exhibit at the New York Historical Society. So we can also maybe talk about <laughs> yeah. that the next time we're on. Cool. It's an art gallery of superhero art and panels blown up. It's nice. got a lot of crazy. It's got a lot of crazy art. And get this, there. Um, I don't know if they if it's still there, but it was there the last week, and it was there in the New York Times article about it. The '66 Batmobile. Yes, that's oh, right. Shit. Nice. So we'll uh, we hopefully can... you get a cruise. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll talk about that too uh, next time we're on as well. All right. Well, can't hey. wait to hear. Oh. Go, go ahead. I can't wait to hear about the, uh, the 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 New Jersey toy show. Yeah, we'll definitely keep you updated on that. But um, all right, everybody, thanks for checking us out. Uh, Theplasticempire.com. Check us out there. You'll be able to get to all our YouTube pages, uh, see our videos, see our uh, podcasts. Uh, check us out on iTunes, the Plastic Empire Podcast. Um, anything else? Uh, Instagram, the Plastic Empire. And uh, Facebook.com backslash The Plastic Empire. Check us out on all those. Please, feedback, comments. We want to hear it. This is, you know, this is our second, our second show. So the more feedback we get, the better. Um, what do you like? What don't you like? What are we doing right? What do you well, hate? And folks, remember, it's the T-H-E Plastic Empire. If you get the, I can't promise. I, I, I can't. It's not a responsibility where you end up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, proper grammar. The. No, no, the, no, no. I'm just saying because uh, if if you want to, if people go on there and just put Plastic Empire, it's gonna it's a totally different website. Yeah, and I screwed the, up. I screwed the, up last podcast, didn't I? Said uh, PlasticEmpire.com at the end. Sorry about that, guys. But uh, yeah, check us out. We appreciate it. And uh, signing off. Peace. Peace. Peace.